Absolute Dawdless here coming at you with another One Piece video. And in today's One Piece video, we have a video that honestly I'm getting quite annoyed to be making a top 128 deck profile of lore. Now, I played in the RNT Treasure Cup this weekend, and I came top 128 and was debated for the 64th spot as well because there was two Robert Grants, well, Robert G's, I should say, in the top 128. So, yeah, that was fun to find out that, oh, I wasn't top 64, I was 104th because I went X3 again. Yeah, I secured a 128 spot again. Like, honestly, three different events, the Treasure Cup in February, the Regional two weeks ago, and also now this Treasure Cup. I'm just sitting here like, I can't break this bubble, but nonetheless, I played Law, and I'm not gonna lie, guys, I really only lost to reasons that were out of my control. I lost to a Law player, a Law mirror match, because he had Otama Vista for my Robin, and he got both his Laws and both his Zoros, and I didn't get any Laws or Zoros. I lost to a Kid player, just because, well, I didn't draw a lot of one drops, and it was very unfortunate in the early game, so I wasn't really able to do a lot, and then he just got the advantage, because a film kid, once he gets the ball rolling, isn't very easy to beat, so it was very unfortunate there, and I lost to a Zoro player, of course, because of double fire fist and a trigger in the life was a jet pistol, so yeah, like, just things that I really couldn't control, such as bricking, bricking and also just double fire fist a very stupid card so yeah those were what i lost to but what did i actually play throughout the entire event um round one i played against a dofi uh i was actually gonna lose that game i'm not gonna lie but he dc'd his camera turned off for like two minutes so he got a game loss it was very unfortunate i didn't really like it i was kind of upset about it it could have changed the entire tournament for me as well so i don't know if i would be 128 if it wasn't for that dc but yeah Dofi round one. Round two was against Luchi. It wasn't a very hard matchup. Round three was against the Zoro. The Zoro that I lost to with double fire fist and a pistol in life. Round four was Whitebeard. I have no troubles with Whitebeard whatsoever in this deck. Uh, round five was Law. He didn't have a Tama Jet pistol and I was able to set up a Nico Robin and just let the ball rolling there. Round six was the Law that I lost to due to bricking and not drawing any of my five blocker Law. Round seven was against the Kid player. Again, very unfortunate match. You guys will see all of these matches on the channel, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, round 8 was against Zoro again. He only had one Fire Fist, so I was able to play through it and get to the game. Round 9 was against Kakuri, and also round 10 was against Kakuri. Kakuri isn't very, a very hard matchup for Law, so it wasn't very difficult. But nonetheless, I want to say that I did have fun throughout the entire tournament. After round 7, I was a little like, oh, why, why? But nonetheless, I had a lot of fun. It was a very fun tournament to play in. I just, you know, want to break this cycle of me playing in big events and only getting the top 128, you know, because I want to win more than just one event pack, if you get what I mean. I want to win more than one event pack on extra stuff. I want to get a prize card. I want to get something nice. But anyway, now that we've talked about that, let's go ahead and get into the deck profile because of I'm ranting, right? So we obviously played Trafalgar Law, um, very good leader, uh, probably one of the best in the game. The only hindrance to him is that Fire Fist is in the game, and it's also known as the most consistent, inconsistent deck. Uh, I really like him just because it's red green. Red is very good. Green is very good. These are two very good colors. But and when you mix them together, it just gets even better because like the fire blocker law is absolutely insane. You get to bounce it back, bounce things back, play more things. It really does come up, and there's times where you just bounce things back and don't even use the play ability. You just bring him back and you don't play anything. So I really do like him. I think he's a very strategic leader, and I like the combo ability with him, which is very nice. I feel like he's the most unique deck in the game because of that. But going on to the actual stuff we played, starting off, we played the four Bonnie. Uh, this is standard. She's Her main purpose in life is just to go ahead and search Blocker Law. Sometimes she does go ahead and search Luffy's or Basil Hawkins, but she is only mainly there just to search the Block of Law. Next, we play four Nami. She searches any Straw Hat from the top five cards of our deck. A uh, very strong card, very nice card. Uh, we swing with her at times by resting a Makino. We go ahead and kill lower costing cards with her. She's just a very good card, and a lot of people kill her most of the time because of that. Like just being able to bounce her back, replay her, and then search again. It's very, very good. Next, we play four Dedan. Uh, she's in the same boat as the Nami. You play four of her because she can go ahead and search the Nami, search another one drop, just allow you to get to like blockers, get you to 2k counters. She has a lot of utility there. And again, people kill this one as well, just because bouncing it back, playing it again, 
free advantage. It's very, very strong. I feel like I've been playing the deck a little differently recently as though, where I'm not really bouncing back these because we have we're in a very aggressive format right now where you have to keep swinging to be able to win. And I feel like instead of just you know bouncing these back, I've been bouncing out back other things to go ahead and be more aggressive recently. So just something of a bit of a play style change that I have with the deck. The two flex spots that have actually changed from the last list is I'm playing two one drop Nami, the Nami that goes ahead and puts a rested dawn onto a character. Now this is a flex spot. These two cards can literally be any card in the game i chose her because i feel like she's a good card in the fact that she lets me play against whitebeard so the main problem i have when it comes to whitebeard even though it is a very easy matchup to begin with and in the one match i did play i didn't even see her is we need that one don to be able to swing with our leader into their leader so the whole logic behind her is oh we play this one nami we drop her down that guarantees that our leader our 5k leader can always swing at life like it's a very good card it's a very decent card and honestly the games that weren't whitebeard this card came up quite a bit and was very useful giving me the extra don being something that i could even swing with at times and people just didn't kill it because it's like oh this card just gives you an extra don like it doesn't really do anything even though they really should have killed it because of i won games just because they didn't so the card is very very strong and nice uh do i think it's the most insane card in the game no it could be literally any other card in the game but this card in my opinion, in the white beard meta that we're currently in, is very strong. And if you do want to play something else, you can. I just like her because you need to be aggressive against the white beard. It's the way you win mainly against them. Um, other one drops we're playing, we're playing uh, four chopper because it's a blocker. He chump blocks. He's very useful in that count. And along with him, we also have the free capone. Now we're playing four chopper and free capone because there's eight ways to search the chopper, but there's only one way to search the capone. So I feel like like yeah you logically should play more of this but we don't want to whiff on our namis and our dedans i would rather search a five cost lore as well with the bonnie but when it comes down to capone i feel like there's a little bit of leeway there like you don't necessarily need it he's not the best blocker he's just a chump blocker there as well and he's not as searchable as the chopper so i'd rather play four chopper and three of him you can honestly cut this down to two as well but i feel like because as i said the aggressive format that we're in being able to drop like three blockers at the end game really does win you games at times so that's one of the reasons we play him as well he's a one drop he's a blocker he's just chump and we play him a three for that reason for 2k counter slash decent one drops as well we're playing four otama um this card is absolutely insane with stuff like Nico Robin. You drop her, you go ahead and decrease something, you then return it to hand, and then go ahead and play her again to go ahead and kill maybe like a 7 cost with a Nico Robin, or you just return it to hand as a 2k counter. Um, this card is a 2k counter, it's just a free decrease by 2k. It helps us get over blockers, it helps us get over big characters. It's just a very decent card and you need to be playing 4 of it. Next, we play free Makino. Um, she is technically the worst 2k in our deck, just for the fact that she only has a tar one target realistically that you want to actually use her ability on, which is the Nami. But she's still very useful in the fact that she's a 2k counter. She can technically increase a chopper, which actually came up during the tournament, where I increased the chopper to be able to swing with it, and then to, to win from that point onwards. Like... I wouldn't play more than three of her unless I can find like something to change, but I feel like I'm very happy with her at three. She's very decent. And that's all the one drops we play. We don't play any other one drops. We don't need any other one drops. I'm very confident in the style and the numbers that we have for this. Like, we're playing a very large amount of one drops because of something I realized from the regional a few weeks back and also the store championship I played in. Like you need to be playing a lot of one drops. So that's kind of like the logic there. We want to be playing a lot of those. So yeah, going on to two costs, we only play four, which is four Brook. Searchable via Nami, 2k counter, and on play, go ahead and put two rested Don on something. Essentially, if we need to get a character on the board, we go ahead and drop the Brook, put two Don on something, and then return it to hand. So it's just essentially there for that. He's very decent, but he's normally the 2k counter we're going to discard, just because we want to keep the one cost, because it will give us more advantage there in the long run. For three cost characters we're playing, we are playing three Nico Robin. She is absolutely insane in this form. Nico Robin is an amazingly good card just for the fact that she swings, she kills a free cost. This is great against Zoro. This is great against the Mirror Match. This is great against Green in general. This is great against so many different decks. Like against a Luchi player, um, I go ahead and play Otama and I had this on the board. So I just went ahead and swing, killed a Kuzan. Like generally, this card busted. I 
see a lot of people playing Vista. I don't agree with it, even though I did technically lose because of a Vista in a Law Mirror match. Um, but it was a Vista Otama, so it was just like, it's unfortunate at that point. But, like, I generally don't agree with um, Vista, and I think this card is just so much better, especially in the Zoro matchup. As long as they don't get, like, multiple Fire Fists, and you can stick the Robin. And if you stick the Robin against the Zoro player, it's just going to be game from that point onwards. Because if they can't remove it, you're going to win. So... Yeah, this card is absolutely insane. I think it's an amazingly good card right now. And yeah, if you're playing Law, I definitely recommend you play it. And then we also play Free Zoro. This is another change from my old list where I was only playing two because I was playing Dagura and stuff. Pretty much, I wanted to be more aggressive this format to be able to kill like characters and also stuff like that. So I put him back up to three. Uh, do I think you need three? Not really. Like I could realistically put it to two, but I wanted to play three just to ensure that I drew it because we need to draw a card. And at times it just helps us go for game, which is very useful, right? Going on to four costs, we're still playing the rook uh, I'm gonna be honest I don't know if I want to still play this it does come up where you can just go ahead and play the brook play a free cost and essentially give you your five characters to shambles out but I'm gonna be honest I don't really think this is super necessary still like for the build that I'm playing I feel like this could easily be a load of other cards this could be maybe another two get counter this could be the Zoro the four cost film Zoro to be able to you know to be able to search out the body and the Nami and it's also 1k higher so it means that we can swing into the white beard with it like it could be a lot of different things but I don't know I'm just a little indifferent on this card right now I don't think it's terrible I just think I might change it out if I do continue to play lore from this point onwards um, and then for five costs, the most important cards in the deck, we're playing the four blocker law. This card is the best card in the deck. If you don't see it, it's a very hard matchup. And if you do see it, it's going to be a very easy matchup. Just being able to shambles this in, return like a Nami or a Zoro to swing again or search more. It's very, very insane. And he's a 6k that you can swing with. He's a blocker that you can block for a free 5k with. It's just a very, very strong card. And generally, I would not change this card for anything else. Like, you need to be playing four of this in the deck. And then we're also playing three of the Restand Law. I'm not going to lie, throughout the tournament, uh, I did discard this card quite a bit. And I know people, some people are going to be like, oh, why did you discard it? That card's great. But, like, it's like there were better cards in my hand. And I would rather have kept those opposed to this. But, like, this card is basically here so you can get extra swings with, like, an Unrested Basil or an Unrested Luffy or even a Law where you can go ahead and swing with the Law, then play this and then Restand the Law. So you still have a blocker that came up quite a few times throughout the tournament as well where i just wanted to swim with the law to apply some more pressure and then i can just play this down and restand the law so i still have a blocker like it's a very good card and a very useful card so that's why we're still playing it in the deck as well uh we're also playing two basil hawkins um uh, this is something that I'm going to be honest, got hit quite a lot whenever I pellied it. When it did survive, it was really strong. Don't get me wrong. Like against Whitebeard, I got this stick and I just kept swinging at his characters, kept swinging at his life, controlling his board, stopping him from being able to kill me. And it was very, very useful there. So it's a very good card overall. And yeah, like two of it's great, but people do just tend to hit it. Like being able to swing twice, one into a character, one into leader is absolutely insane. And I wouldn't cut this card either. Like this is something I would keep in the deck no matter what. Just because it, it puts a pressure. It applies so much pressure. It means your opponent has to try and solve it. So I really do like it. Like the only problem is I just wish it wasn't a slash character. I wish it was a wisdom so it could get over like buggies. Like that's one of the biggest problems in this deck. We play so many slash characters. So yeah. And then the last card we're playing is the one rush Luffy. Because it's Luffy. You want to rush with him. You want to go ahead and get past those blockers. He's basically an end of the game card most of the time. Sometimes we do just play him earlier on. So we can get in that extra life. Get in that extra pressure. But generally, he is here to just go ahead and be that, oh, it's the end of the game. You have like four blockers, but no life. GG, well played. Like, that's the point of this card. But yeah, guys, that is the list of my top 128 uh, log deck profile. The third one, hopefully in the next event, we can go higher. I don't know if we'll be playing lore in the next event that I play in. Like, I think the next one I'm going into is in March. Uh, no, sorry, not March, October, where I'm going to be playing in OPO for the regionals there. But yeah, what do I think of lore right now, though, guys? I think it's a very strong deck. I think it's a very good deck. Like, generally, Fire Fist is just so annoying. It's the bane of my existence, and it's one of the reasons why i think i'm gonna take a bit of a break from law for a bit try some other things figure out what i want to play um overall because yes i do really love law i think he's still a great leader but 
getting fire fisted, man, it really does suck. And like, there's just times where you brick with him, and it is unfortunate. But yeah, that like that's just my thoughts right now, guys. Um, on the deck in general, it's a great deck. It's a very powerful deck, very strong deck. Very good matchup against Whitebeard. Very good matchup against a lot of the decks in the game outside of Zoro because of Fire Fist. But whiffing on searches, uh, not getting the ability to get to your five drop law on turn three normally, or just in general getting Fire Fisted. It's just a very very annoying matchup when it happens but guys tell me what your thoughts are on my deck list on the comment section below tell me your thoughts are on the deck in general do you think the deck is great do you think the deck is good do you think you're going to be playing Trafalgar Law um I don't know I might bring it back in OPO4 OPO3 I think I'm going to move on a bit play some other stuff have some fun until we get to the new format and yeah just figure out how I want to play this game going forward so yeah guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more One Piece content and Yu-Gi-Oh content if you are into that as well and I will see you guys in the next one. Absolute Doorless signing out. Later.